So far in the course, we've considered data visualization, as well as univariate data analysis. In this next section on least squares, we bring these two concepts together. We're going to visualize our least squares model using scatter plots, and we're also going to use confidence intervals to interpret our least squares model. The reason for considering least squares models at this point is not only to combine those prior two topics, but also to build a core set of concepts which we will use in the following section for the analysis of experimental data. So far in your career, you've likely used and built several least squares models where a single x variable is used to predict a y value. In other words, a model of the form y equals an intercept plus a slope times your prediction variable x to make a prediction of y. Now you've done this so many times that you probably haven't given it too much thought. But that already assumes that you've got a good x predictor for y. How did you know that before building the model? Most likely, you used a scatter plot to see if there was a worthwhile relationship. But did you know that you can use a confidence interval to provide a similar judgment? Sometimes we might not be able to plot our data. It could be too much data, or as is increasingly the case, automated systems build these models for us. Researchers at Google, Facebook, large banks, grocery stores, and so on, cannot possibly plot their data set every time to see if there's a correlation. We have to have automated tools to help us. For example, you might wish to predict the vapor pressure based on an input variable of the temperature in a distillation column. But which tray temperature should you use as that input variable? There are over 30 trays, and you cannot go build a model manually in Excel for each one. Which tray temperature has the highest correlation with that vapor pressure? And right there is a new word you probably have heard but have not defined yet. Correlation, as well as a term covariance. We will start off in the next video with those two topics. Once we understand those two concepts, we will look at least squares models where there's just a single x variable used to predict your y variable. We will spend quite a bit of time on that to help you interpret the r squared value correctly and to recognize that it should not be your only guide in judging a least squares model. We will also learn how to properly judge the predictions from these models. Then we'll move on to multiple linear regression, also called MLR, where there's more than one x variable used to predict y. This will get us ready for that next module on designed experiments. I would also like to recommend these books to you if you want some more details. The first one, by John Fox, is a great overview of linear models. You've already used Dr. Fox's CAR library extensively in R to plot QQ plots. Dr. Fox is a professor of sociology here at McMaster University. The other books are more technically oriented and go into some of the mathematical details which some of you might appreciate. 